Hello everyone, we are live, live, we are live now. Thank you for joining. This is a long awaited um, show that we've been waiting to bring in our season guest. And I'm excited today, to, today. And before I bring him on board, I'd like to introduce what the show is all about. I also like to introduce myself. My name is Sandro Uko. I'm a Maxwell Leadership Certified Team Member. I'm a sales expert of over 20 years in the IT industry. I'm also a member of the Toastmaster and a best-selling author. And today we have a seasoned guest who is a man of God and also a business tycoon. And but before we bring him on board, I'd like to introduce what the show is all about. But before then, I would leave the floor for my co-host to also introduce himself. Yeah, hello, great people. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this Morning Matters show. Promises to be very, very insightful. I am Mr. Paul, professional member of the Institute of Chartered Accountant, and I teach and train people on money, finance, investment. I want you to get your papers on ground and your notes and your pen. Get ready to get the financial intelligence info from Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. I want you, Sandra, over to you, please. Thank you. I just want to introduce this. So welcome back. Over to you, um, Israel Paul. You can take okay. over. Okay. Welcome, great people. Uh, before we bring up our guest, I want to know who is following us right now and where you are um, watching us from. So um, I would just like to see your name. Um, at the comment section, you could just type your name um, and where you're calling us, uh, where you're watching, rather, where you're watching from um so that we get to know i can see some of us are live now with us um just type your name at the comment section my name is financial paul i'm watching from this uh part of the country uh we have quite a number of people joining us from uh, nigeria um usa yes we want this show to be as um what is it called impactful and engaging as ever so i can see one of us um typing i can see uche chukwemeka from usa thank you so much uche chukwemeka for joining us from usa um come on type type in the comment section um i can see paul panel of lagos nigeria i am so glad you are all joining us on this show and um if you are also joining us i can see that we are more than two just um type in the comment section so that we can um kick off we just need one more uh answer one more uh introduction then we kick off um uche joining us from usa um and paul my namesake is joining us from um lagos awesome. nigeria awesome like awesome to... awesome welcome <laughs> yeah thank you so much uh before we bring in our guest um into the show today um the topic for today's section is what financial what um literacy. Literacy as it relates to real estate investment now um financial literacy is very very important yeah we have a guest right now so i'm great, excited great, to bring him great. on board awesome. but before i do that i rather okay. want to read his shout bow okay. <laughs> i'm excited great. No, I'm Wait, so sorry right. we, we, we started late. We had some technical issues, but I'm really glad that we're here today with you. And so before I bring him on board, I just want to quickly say one or two things about him. Okay. I just want to quickly say that. So great to have you. We have with us today, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel, Popularly, popularly known as the common sense guru. He's no doubt one of the world's leading relationship experts. He's a motivational speaker and a world creation agent with over three decades of transforming lives. Wow, that's awesome. That's three decades. Wow. He holds a doctorate degree in entrepreneurship leadership, an executive master's degree in business administration from the University of Huddersfield in the UK, He's a real estate executive certificate 
with a special focus on capital markets, project finance, and business strategy from the prestigious Harvard Business School in the United States. Dr. Lumide is a leading voice for personal corporate and national transformation. He is a best selling author of over 50 books, a media personality, and the CEO of the Common Sense Group with nine subsidiaries and a global print. There's also one thing missing, is also a pastor. So great to have you, sir. Thank you <laughs> very excited. much for having me. Finally, finally, oh. I'm, here. I'm excited. I've been waiting for technology. <laughs> No, wow. you know that some things you cannot work against, but just be calm and you'll be there. It will be wow. resolved. I'm happy we're, we're yet together this evening. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. For joining. And I just read his bow, and the floor is all yours, sir. We'll just give you the floor to speak. Tell us about financial literacy as it relates to real estate. Everyone wants to get into real estate, but there is a build up. You have to start somewhere. You have to build. You don't start, uh, you don't build a skyscraper from the top. You go from the bottom. So today I would want to leave the floor for you. Take over, sir, and just tell us all you can use to help us so we can start small and grow big. Okay. Since we have lost time, how long do I have? Maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll take questions. So how do we do it? Because no, if I start have, talking. <laughs> no, you, no, we have about 30 minutes. Then we use another 30 minutes for questions. Okay. So thanks for having me. It's nice to be with you and also uh, Financial Paul. Thank nice you, to sir. Meet you too. <laughs> uh, so, well, basically, one of the things I've come to realize is that um, as individuals, in order for us to become wealthy, we need to be intentional, strategic, and consistent about becoming wealthy. Wealth is created, and wealth creation takes time. And wealth creation is something that anyone that wants to be a part of that journey must be intentional about doing it. So number one, wealth is created. Number two, wealth creation takes time. Number three, there is a process to wealth creation. So wealth creation is something that goes through a process of you being transformed, and then you are not able to transform your situation. And then there are ingredients for wealth creation. If you're going to be able to create wealth, there are ingredients that are required for the creation of wealth. And then there are vehicles for wealth creation. And when it comes to becoming wealthy, I tell people that there are three major steps on the pathway to wealth. Step one is financial intelligence. Step two is financial planning. Step three is financial discipline. Financial intelligence is the foundation and the engine room for wealth creation because you need to become financially intelligent in order to be able to develop a financial plan and in order to be able to work the plan and become what you need to become financially. And now financial intelligence is something that they don't teach in school. Schools don't teach financial intelligence. That's why you find that it's easy for you to see people that have gone through you know, different kinds of um, academic education, and yet they are still not financially literate because academic education is different from financial education. I always say to people, you need five kinds of education. Uh, number one, you need spiritual education. Number two, you need personal education. Number three, you need marketplace education. Number four, you need, uh, you need academic education. And then number five, you need financial education. So sometimes lack of financial education makes a lot of people to be locked out of that journey into the place of wealth. So financial intelligence, financial literacy is something that no one should take for granted because the more you learn, the more you earn. Your learning capacity actually determines your earning capacity. So it's very, very important for everyone to be able to give attention to the aspect of financial literacy. And then when it comes to the aspect of real estate, I've come to realize that in order to create wealth, real estate is one of the major vehicles of wealth creation. Now, real estate is not just a vehicle of wealth creation. It's also a vehicle of wealth retention. So it helps you to create the wealth and it helps you to retain the wealth. So you find out that rich and wealthy people all over the world 
use real estate to retain their wealth. So when they say a man is wealthy, it's not necessarily because of his bank balance. It's because of the asset base that he has been able to develop. And when it comes to real estate, I've come to realize that there are four major areas that you can play in when it comes to real estate. Number one, you can be a regulator, whereby you operate in the regulatory aspect of real estate, which is where the government comes in and some professionals come in. Uh, but apart from that, you can be a realtor, which is actually the low-hanging fruit, where you can easily come in. And as a realtor, when you come into the real estate sector, you don't necessarily have to remain that way, but you come. You can come in through the realtorship uh, path in real estate. Number three, you can be a developer where you are involved in the business of real estate itself because you are either a real estate investor or you are a real estate business person. And then number four, you can be an investor where you invest in real estate. So when you want to come into real estate, you have to be able to decide which of the areas you want to play, but you need financial intelligence. You need financial literacy to be able to understand all these different dimensions and be able to marry it with your strengths and your weaknesses, do a SWOT analysis. You have to be able to marry it with your experience and marry it with your passion and your desires and what you can be able to manage. And then when it comes to the issue of real estate, I say to people that real estate is so powerful, powerful, because a city today was a village yesterday, a village today will be a city tomorrow. You don't wait to buy land, you buy land and wait. And um, when you look at real estate, you find out that when you are investing in real estate, you are operating on tripartite level. Because number one, everything under the ground belongs to you. So if you buy a piece of real estate, one acre, one hectare, 10 acre, 10 hectare, 100 acre, 100 hectares, you are buying the land, but everything under the ground belongs to you. So whatever is under the ground is your own, level one. The real estate, the ground itself, is your own level two whatever you build on it is your own level three so when you are going to real estate is one investment with three possibilities and that is amazing when you even talk about land banking alone you can buy a piece of land and leave it for a window period and the land just continues to appreciate of its own accord so let me say a few things about real estate just to help people understand how powerful this real estate stuff is I've said before, number one, is a very powerful vehicle of wealth creation. Number two, it's not just a powerful vehicle of wealth creation, it's also a powerful vehicle of wealth retention. Number three, real estate helps you to hedge against inflation. So you see a lot of people that have invested in all kinds of stuff, and then inflation comes and eats it up. Number four, real estate helps you to hedge against devaluation. So when your currency is being devalued, you find out that if you have been able to hedge your bet with real estate, it will help you to hedge against devaluation. Number five, real estate is the only, and I repeat, the only vehicle of wealth creation that does not have incremental value when it comes to size. The size of the real estate will never increase. When God created the world, he created the world. The size of the world is still the same size. So that's earth that you and I are living in. When two people were living on earth, it was the same size. With over 8 billion people on earth, it's the same size. The size of the earth has not changed. But the population continues to grow. That is why real estate will continue to appreciate. Number six, real estate is the only vehicle of wealth creation where if you leave it without doing anything with it, it continues to grow. <laughs> you see, you just buy land and leave it there. You don't need to do anything. The land will continue to grow in value without you having to do anything on the land. And then real estate is actually the real investment because every sector on earth is a real estate business. And when you don't understand real estate, you're actually shooting yourself in the leg. So let's run through different sectors. You see, you have a medical doctor in the medical profession. He's hospital, not real estate. Exactly. He's the clinic, not real estate. Yeah. He's the chemist, not real estate. He's the pharmacist, not real estate. All, so everybody that's I'm into medical profession, you're actually into real estate business. But if you don't do the real estate business, you'll become a doctor that is going on strike. 
you will become a doctor that is waiting for salary to survive. He said, no, 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 I'm into, I'm into hospitality. I'm into hospitality. I run a restaurant. Is the restaurant not real estate? Is the hotel not real estate? Is the amusement park not real estate? No, 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 I'm into health and wellness. I run a gym. Is the gym not real estate? Oh, no, 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 no. See, I'm into transportation. I'm into transportation. The road that you are driving your car on, is it not real estate? The airports, is it not real estate? The train station, is it not real estate? The seaport, is it not real estate? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm into manufacturing. Your factory, is it not real estate? No, 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 no. You see, I'm a teacher. I'm into education. The school, is it not real estate? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm into ICT. I do ICT. All your tank farm, where do you have it? All your servers, where do you have your server? Is it not in a warehouse somewhere? Is it not in a... so? Every business on earth is a real estate business. So, not to play in real estate is actually foolishness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For you to ignore real estate, you're actually operating foolishness because every name any business you want to name. I'm a politician. Is White House not real estate? Is the capital, uh, capital in is not so the Senate House is it not real estate? I'm a military person, I'm into I'm in the military. Is the Pentagon not real estate? Is your barracks not real estate? Is the training ground not real estate? Where do you pack all your machine gun? Where do you pack all your bombs? Where do you pack the ammo tank? Is it not in real estate? So name one industry in this world is a real estate business. So mm. there is no business but real estate. <laughs> so awesome. you need you need to have this understanding. So when we are telling you real estate, we are not joking here. Faith is land. Let's even go spiritual. Faith is land. All this faith, faith, faith is land. Read your Bible very well because whosoever owns the land determines the fate of the land. If you are born in Saudi Arabia, you are most likely a Muslim. If you are born in Pakistan, you are most likely a Muslim. Why? Because the owner of the land determines the faith that is practiced in the land. So faith is land. When he told Abraham, I'm giving you the promise word. Promise land. It's not promise yeah. ever, no. Promise land. It's a land matter. It's a matter of land. Promise land. The land of the Hittite, the land of the Evite, the land of the Jebusite. So it's about land. So God is the number one real estate mogul. He's the first real estate mogul. Awesome. And the business, the, the most important business on earth is the business of the earth itself, real estate. So anyone listening to us right now, if you really want to matter, then you need to begin to consider real estate. Then in closing, so that we can take questions, when it comes to financial intelligence and real estate, I want to talk to us about collaboration and fractional ownership. Because I've come to realize that, like I shared when I came to um, the U.S., you know, um, in the tour of U.S., I was in six different states. I was in Detroit. I was in Ohio. I was in Dallas. I was in Houston. I was in Atlanta, I was in New York. I'm going to be back in August and I'm going to do another five or six series. And we're doing Maryland, so get ready. Maryland live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do New York, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas. I'll do Maryland and most likely Chicago. But we're just, we're still working on all that. So, and one of the things I did was to talk to people about understanding their economic environment which is a problem that most people in the western world has so i see a lot of nigerians they are in the western world they don't realize that they're in a capitalist society and they are doing two three four jobs and 10 15 years later they are still poor and confused they are still in debt because they don't understand that in a capitalist environment you don't win by salaries the way capitalist systems are structured it is structured for entrepreneurs and job creators to prosper it is not structured for salary earners because the system has been programmed in such a way that every money you make, they will collect it back. And a lot of people think that they need to make more money and they end up paying more bills. They end up paying more taxes. So you are doing two, three, four jobs and you are so proud in the fact that you are doing two, three, four jobs, not knowing that you are involved in multiple struggles and not multiple streams of income. So I say to people, begin to think of collaboration. Unfortunately, when Africans go to the Western world, they go to look for a job. When Asians and Jews go into the Western world, they go to start a business. So you see a lot of all these guys, they come in and then they collaborate together. But we, we find it difficult to collaborate because we still have that Uchedu and Sons, Lalupo and Sons mindset where you want to own everything by yourself. 
And I say to people, it is better to own 10% of 1 billion than to own 100% of 1,000. So many people want to own 100% of zero and just be MDCU over a portfolio that does not make anything. So let's begin to think of collaboration. If we collaborate, I've done it successfully in different parts of the world. Anyone that is serious about wealth creation, if you are ready to collaborate, anybody anywhere can become a millionaire in five to 10 years. Anybody anywhere. And whether it's London, whether it's America, or in five to 10 years, you can be talking million. And I have track record of people that will have helped to do that. So let's begin to think of collaboration and fractional ownership. You don't need to own everything. You can own a part. So if you are listening to me right now, you are anywhere in the world, look for people that can join you. Our ancestors did this thing. Unfortunately, we went to school and they took common sense away from us and gave us degree and gave us certificates. And now we are, we are, we are, we are, we are certified graduates without common sense. And we, even though we call it common sense, it's not common because not everybody has it. In sure. Nigeria, where I am now, the literate are the landlord, the educated ones are the tenants. You see people that have master's degree parking a 12 million dollar car in the 8 million dollar rented apartment and they don't know that they are confused. Why? Because what's your problem? That you go to school and their school has not taught you how to be able to manage your resources. So, fractional ownership and collaboration. If five, ten people come together, you put ten thousand dollars together every year, you raise hundred thousand dollars. With hundred thousand dollars, you can buy into Frank. With hundred thousand dollars, you can um, buy one or two properties cash and begin to make money. And that property continues to appreciate. And while that is going on, you are, you bring another hundred thousand and you keep going. And if you continue like that, in ten years, we can build a portfolio of millions of dollars in real estate and a portfolio of millions of dollars in franchising. So I will stop there. We are, I'm open to answer questions for anyone that asks questions. Since we have lost some time, let's see how we can. Gain it back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's a great one. Very great. I just want to do a quick recap for those joining us. Just not to play in real estate is foolishness. That's a great word. And that's, yeah. you know, ring a bell. Not playing in real estate. And God is the number one mogul in land ownership. So if our father, the creator of the whole world, owns the land, <laughs> why are we not playing in there? Then that means we're thinking small. Awesome, awesome. And you spoke about everything we do is real estate. So being a doctor, a trader, a business owner, a nurse, everything we do is real estate. So start thinking real estate. Understanding your economic world is critical. You can't be in a capitalist and you want to work nine to five and do three, four jobs and think you can build worlds. No. So you need to understand your community, your where you are located. Yeah, awesome. And you spoke about collaboration, which is awesome. And that's what we need to do. I think that's the business of this age. You know, people coming together to put a fraction of what they have. Rather than you leaving and running a show, like you rightly said, better to own 10% of a hundred thousand hundred billion than owning a hundred percent of a hundred. And the moment the business flops, everything goes down. So you imagine having 10 different organizations sending you 10% of everything they do in a year. That's a lot of money. And you can focus on other things that you're doing with your time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. For those who probably want to ask questions, I'm going to be sending in the StreamYard details so you can come into the studio and so you can speak to Dr. Lumide yourself and ask your question. We don't want to keep him. I know it's late in some uh, country. So this is the StreamYard link. You can join the StreamYard and I'll bring you on to speak with him. But before that, that's, uh, you know, I actually left the very basic one which is having financial literacy. You might want to throw a little more light on that before people start coming in. As soon as they come in, I would let you know. Okay, like I said earlier on, schools don't teach financial intelligence. Financial literacy is understanding money, how to make it, how to manage it, how to multiply it. It's understanding the inner workings of money. What's an asset? What's a liability? What is cash flow? What is compound interest? What is income what is expenditure what is budgeting and many times people want to make money they wake up very early in the morning to go to work come back late at night but they are not ready to give attention to the acquisition of knowledge the day you stop learning you start dying yeah. and a lot of people need to understand that if you grow up you will stay up but if you jump up you will come down 
financial intelligence helps you to grow up. But if you don't have financial intelligence, you are like somebody that is great, gets crashing. And if you get crashed, you will crash land. So mm -hmm. it is understanding that helps you to become outstanding. If you are not informed, you will be deformed. If you are not inspired, you will expire. If you are not updated, you will be outdated. If you are not in the know, you cannot be in the flow. What you know determines how far you go. Those who know rule over those who do not know. Information is the key to transformation. Mm. So you really cannot do anything without information. I don't understand why people will be ready to wake up early in the morning, come back late at night and do that for 30 years. But the same set of people are not ready to sit down for one hour to listen to a program like this. They are not ready to buy one book and they will tell you it's expensive. What is expensive? Most of the books that will transform your life are not as expensive as all the material things that you have put around your life that has not changed your life. You are buying bag and shoe to match. Your destiny is not matching your bank account. Yet to buy a book of fifty dollars, you say it's too expensive. You are doing eyelashes, doing nails. You are buying mobile phone, buying bow tie, buying three piece suits, and yet you cannot attend the seminar and pay for it. So financial intelligence is key because academic education does not give it. Having a PhD in swimming technology does not make you a swimmer. So you can have PhD in swimming technology and study swimming, you know, and then but once you enter water and swim, you are not a swimmer. That's why you see people today, they have master's degree. Master's degree has become a dime a dozen now. Um, I've got master's, master's, I did my master's. And they are looking for a job. If you did master, you master over what? Have you mastered any business? You are just going to do theory. So a lot of people have master's degree in business administration. They can't even run a baby salon successfully. They can't run a restaurant. Why? Because they have gone to learn the theory, but they don't understand practical. And that is why we need to balance book smart and street smart, hard work and smart work, so that we will not be one-sided and they will get ourselves into trouble. So financial intelligence comes through personal development and capacity building. And it comes through you being intentional, deliberate, and consistent about your financial education. Because if you don't take that serious, you're just going to end up becoming a liability to yourself and to those around you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think I have a question here. And for anyone who wants to join the, uh, the studio, you want to ask him a question, you might just join the stream here and I'll bring you on to the studio. I have a question yes, sir. She says, uh, Deborah Taylor, thank you for joining. My question is, what are the good and the bad points of investing in real estate in different countries? Okay, number one is to understand the economic climate and the economic environment where you want to invest. And then you need to understand the laws of this, the country. You need to understand the tax system of the country just basically understand the economic environment. Because if you don't understand the economic environment of where you are investing in, then you can become a victim of that environment. And when you understand the economic environment of that country, it will also help you to be able to know how to position yourself. So for instance, I live in Nigeria. Nigeria is a different economic environment from the US or the UK. But because I live in Nigeria, our properties in the US, in the UK, South Africa, Ghana, all over the world, our properties everywhere. But most of the places I have property in, well, not most, all the places I have property in, I don't do mortgage, I pay cash. Why? Because I understand the economic environment of the place that I am operating in. So I won't come to America now and come and do mortgage when I'm not working in America and I'm not going to be making, I'm not a salary earner. You understand? So if you want to buy property anywhere in the world, just make sure you understand the economic environment, make sure that you understand all the system of that environment so that you will not be a victim of that environment. Once you understand that, I would advise you to play in a sector that you can have a level of control over. Play in the sector that you can have a level of control over. So e.g., I will advise if you can do cash, do cash. If you can do collaboration, do collaboration so that you have equity participation. So if you start out with fractional ownership and equity ownership and joint ownership, 
then you are sharing the risk. You are not the one carrying all the risk in whatever country you go into. And then make sure it's also a country where it's still the same thing about economic but where you understand how whether you can get your money out because there are countries where if you invest there, the money must stay there. You can't repatriate your money. So you need to really study this concept of economic environment before you go into any country to invest. So and that, I think that's what I will be able to say for now. Any other question? Are you there, Sandra? Hello. I think Sandra is having a, a network issue. Sir, but uh, I can see other question here. Um, okay. The question here is, um, how can we teach our children about financial literacy on a consistent basis since this is not um, offered in school? What are ways we can um, start from childhood and teach children financial literacy? That's the question. We're okay. Back. When it yeah. comes to teaching children financial literacy... Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. You're back. Yeah. You're back now. Hello. Sorry. Yes, I can hear you now. You are back. But um, okay, sir. so uh, financial Paul has been able to ask a question that's on set. So I'm, I'm trying to answer that now on how you can teach your children financial literacy. One of the things I've come to realize about parenting, um, my first daughter will be 25 in October. Uh, my second child um, will be 23 next month. So I've been a parent now. So I've, I've been, I have three kids. Uh, so one thing I can tell you for free about parenting is that no matter the book, no matter the lecture, you are the best lecturer. Your lifestyle is the best lecturer. So the best way to teach your children about money is to be a financially literate person. So my son, the last boy now that's just 10 years old, understands money because he sees the way we talk about money. He sees the way we spend money. When he gets money, he says, no, 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 you can't spend it. You need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do that. And because of the example we have been to him, that has helped him to know that. So now he saves money. He understands that he cannot just spend every money he makes. So be the first example. Then number two, expose them to books. Like the School of Money book now. I don't know who you are, but if you can get in touch with me, um, you can. all of you listen to me, you can follow me on social media at Olumid Emmanuel, Olumid Emmanuel on Instagram and Twitter and on Facebook at Olumide.Emmanuel. And then you can DM me. I can send you the School of Money book student version. It's free for your children. So School of Money book student version. It's free. I'll send it to you for your children. So everybody that has children um, that are students. So as long as your children are between the ages of 5 and 18 or 19, then the book will be good for them. It's absolutely free. It's one of the things we do to give back. School of Money student version. So you need to now begin to expose them to books and materials that can help them. There are a lot of documentaries on, um, on finances on YouTube. There are documentaries on Netflix on finances. You can sit down together as a family, watch the documentary. If I can, okay, let me do this. Okay. Let me show you something right now. Let me take you to my dining just to see what we are talking about. Because many times, when we see some of these things, people think we are just saying, uh, at least I didn't know you are going to ask this question. People think we are just talking. Look at it. What can you see on my dining here? Can you see this? A lot of books. Okay, this is a game. Yeah, this is okay. Monopoly. Yeah. Wow. This is Monopoly. Now, okay. this is Monopoly that my wife and I and our 10 year old son we have been playing that game now for the past. We started in March. This is May. Wow. So that Monopoly has been on that table now since March. <laughs> wow. And we have not finished playing with a 10 year old wow. boy. Mm. So my wife and I and the boy will be because the two other ones are in the US. So we have been playing that game. So you you, you use games. So there's monopoly. There's a lot of games. So these are realities. This is what we do. So it's mm. not that you just this is what we practice. By that you play monopoly, you, they will learn a lot about money. They learn about so now he knows about ah, I'm going to buy a house. No, that land is cheap. I'm going to buy this. So they understand. So there are a lot of games that are financial games that you can use to teach them. And monopoly has been there forever. 
So that that's um, what I can say on that. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this. This is a great eye opener. So we are our um we are we we, we teach them by example. That's just it. So uh, I think uh, Sandra is having issues with the network. There's just one last question. Let me ask this question. Then I hope the network will be clear from my head, so she can um uh, take it up. Someone asked the question: How can I enter real estate market, and how much can I start it? Let's take, take for instance, someone want to kick up real estate. Is there any way? How can the person work um with uh? Because we know you are into the real estate space. Is there a way you can help us out to keen into um the real estate market? And uh, how much can they start with? Like I said earlier, on, there are four ways you can play in the real estate sector. You can be a, you can be a regulator, you can be a developer, you can be an investor, and you can be a realtor. The easiest way is to be a realtor, and you don't need money. <laughs> so to play in the real estate, you need zero capital. All you need is the passion and the willingness to change your story. So you be a realtor. Who is a realtor? Is an agent that connects the buyer to the seller and gets a commission. So as I'm here right now, I have houses for sale in America. If you get somebody to buy that house, you get 5% commission. I have houses for sale in Nigeria. If you get somebody to get, buy that house, you get 5% commission. I have land for sale in different locations in Nigeria. If you get a buyer for it, you get 10 to 15% commission. You don't need money. Just get <laughs> understanding of the fact that you can use your network to create a net worth. So everybody you have, you have a mobile phone, you have at least 250 names on that mobile phone. Those 250 people are potential customers that can buy real estate through you and they can make money through you and you get your commission. So you don't need money to start. You just start by being a realtor. So you can contact us, like I said, follow me on all my social media platforms. Then you can DM us on how to be a You can register with us as a realtor, and they will tell you all the properties that we have and how you can register. It's free. You just register, then sell, and you get your commission. Sandra, are you back? Yes, I am. <laughs> I had to use my phone to come in. <laughs> wow, wow. I had to use my so, phone. <laughs> so you people, yeah. too, you have network problem in America. Are you, are you going to be talking? You'll be blaming us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't know how this came to be, so that's why I can't even say because no, our network here is always very strong. But yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Right? I hear you. <laughs> well, okay, then. Back. Yeah, thank you so much. I have more questions. Okay. I think okay. I do have a, a question from Uche Chukwemeka. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to read this chat. So just a second. How can I enter the real estate market? And how okay. much can I start with? Okay, I just answered that Doctor now. Just answer. answer the question. Oh, good, good. Good. Okay. I have another question. Are you, sir? Ajayi. Can you give snippets on how Africans can come together to form an alliance in diaspora with regards to trust? Okay, um, so one of the major thing I keep hearing Africans in the as well I talk about is trust and trust and trust. And I think it's a carryover. And it's part of the mental you know, blockage that the enemy used to block us. So you are talking of trust. Please, all of you that are in America that have bank, do you know the owner of the bank? No. Why are you carrying your money there? So it's just... I don't, I don't want to be insulted. It's just something is just wrong with us as Africans. Because you are in a different environment, yet you are still thinking like a Nigerian. Our banks not folding up in America now. Who did you go and touch? Eh? Our banks not folding up in America. Who did you go and meet? So what you need to understand is that there is no trust anywhere. The only reason why you trust people in America is because the legal system works. If Americans move to Nigeria, where the legal system does not work, we will have trust issues. So in America, the legal system works. So what you need to do is if you are coming together, forget that it's my brother and my sister. Have a legal contract. Because 
have a legal contract. And let it be a binding contract that anybody that defaults on the contract, you carry them to court, they go to jail. So when you announce say trust, 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 I have, I ask people questions. All the cities I went to, I said, okay, you are saying trust. Number one, are you trustworthy? <laughs> so if you are trustworthy, are you saying that you are the only trustworthy person on earth? Yeah. Trust, trust, trust. Yeah, the person asking the question, like I ask everybody. So all your life, you don't have 10 people you can trust. And you are married, so you don't trust your wife. And you have mother, you don't trust your mother. You have brother, you have a... Cousin. So all the friends, ah, this is my G, this is my best friend. We've known each other for 10 years. So what kind of friendship are you people doing for 10 years, for 15 years, that you don't trust each other enough to do business together? Then you people are just deceiving yourself. You don't even understand friendship. So what, what what kind of friendship are you doing? We go on holiday together, we gym together, we are going to the movie together, and you cannot put money together to prosper, and you are struggling together, and you are in debt together, and you are confused together. So let's stop all this trust blockage. Hey, I don't trust our people. I don't trust our people. It's nonsense language that people should not be mentioning. If you don't trust people, who do you want to trust? It's white man you want to trust. <laughs> There is no sure. human being that is different from every human being is the same. Didn't we see them in Capitol Hill? Didn't we see what they went to do in January two a few years ago? When there is riots in America, don't you see them looting everywhere? Human beings are the same anywhere in the world. All mm -hmm. factors being the same. The only reason why it looks as if people are brought are normal is because of the fact that you are in an organized system. All of you in America that are Nigerians, do you go, do you pass one way in America? Can you wind down in America and throw nylon out of the window? But when you come to Nigeria, don't you do it? Why didn't you do it in America and you are doing this in Nigeria? It's because you know all of you, you are abroad, you will kill. But once you enter Nigeria, you begin to misbehave. Why? Because you already know that Nigeria is not organized. So there is no normal human being anywhere. It's the system that is making you people look as if you are normal. So as far as I'm concerned, if you want to prosper, forget all this trust issue. There are trustworthy people like you, except you are not a trustworthy person. Even arm robbers that are arm robber, they are looking for a trustworthy person to give their money to, even arm robbers. So they are trustworthy people. So what I call it wealth creation clubs. Gather yourself together and set up a wealth creation club. Minimum of five. Because if it's less than five, it will take a longer time. But with five people, ten, ideal. If you have more than ten, the more people you have, the faster. But I advise people, minimum of five, ideally ten people that can afford 10000 a year or 1000 a month. If you do $1,000 a month or you do 10000 a year, because it will help you with 50, 50,000, five people, 50,000. I can now come in as your mentor and then I mentor you for ten years or now you can create wealth and do that for people all over the world. So once you come together, I will now come on board as a mentor to the group and then you, you pay my consulting fee and I'll, I'll guide you through the process. Awesome. So all you need is a lawyer, you do your legal documentation and the document is binding. Anybody that misbehave, you take them to court, they go to jail. Awesome, awesome. That is a great one. <laughs> It is, everybody is the same everywhere in the world, like you rightly said. It's the system that is making everyone act normal. And that's true, having a legal system in place, you know, that's a great one. I don't want, let me go to the other question, but this is interesting. And I'm sure if, uh, if you do have a question, you can send it at the chat. I can read it out to him. He can take your question. And if you will, I think basically because of the network or the net uh, bandwidth, we can't come into the studio, but you can send your message via, via chat and I'll be able to read it out. I have a question here from Evangelist Bibi Abiola. She was talking about, yeah. <laughs> she was asking, how do you train and teach the young stars to get financial literacy? Literacy, as in starting from school, but I think Starting very early is key. We've answered we've answered that question also earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, true. I, while your network had um, some little distance, um, doctor uh, gave an answer to that. Um, on that, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the person can go back to watch the video. You can often go back to watch the video. 
Yeah, I think I have a question from Ajayi Ayesa. If you can share a template we can use for some collaborations. I think that's what he already said, talking about forming a group and bringing him on board to mentor you. Maybe you want, you let, have something else to say. Let me that again. Let okay, me sir. That so, that we can, so number one, get a minimum of five people. Ideally, 10 people. So we should be looking for 10. So let's work with 10. Okay. 10 people, that's 9 plus you, making 10. Now, yeah. 10 of you will come together and form what we call Wealth Creation Club. That's the name I give to people all over the world. So don't think that it is your name. If you form Wealth Creation Club, there are other Wealth Creation Clubs already existing. So, But mm. I want to use that name so that you can help all of us, Wealth Creation Club. So you can mm. have 10,000 Wealth Creation Clubs all over the world. It doesn't matter. So you form a Wealth Creation Club. When you form the Wealth Creation Club, all of you will agree that you are going to be putting money together either monthly or annually. Now, if it's monthly, ideally $1,000 a month, which will be 12000 a year. If it is yearly, $10,000 a year. So I advise people to do yearly because if you are doing monthly, it may take a while to gather the money and to invest it and the money will just be sitting down. So you can do 10000 per annum and you can work around your tax refund March, April, when you get your tax returns, you can now do your financial uh, uh, spiritual obligation and then you put 10000 aside or you can remortgage your house or you can sell any of the assets you have, get 10000 every year or you can save your money and do so. You can start cooperative monthly, 1000 to raise the 13000 for you to do so. 10000 So if 10 of you put 10000 together, that would be 100000 then, in order to manage the fund and manage the group, I would now advise that everybody will pay an annual due to be a part of that group. So that that annual due will pay for somebody like me or you want to have a meeting or whatever. So that annual due, then you get a lawyer and then you can now register, you do a, a, what you call a legal uh, partnership agreement. And the legal partnership agreement will also um, list out the terms and conditions. Okay, we are in this partnership together, and it's going to be a ten-year partnership. And within the next ten years, everybody will bring ten thousand dollars. Is a slot is ten thousand. You can do two slots. You can do three slots. You can do five and bring fifty thousand. A slot is ten thousand dollars per annum, and everybody will be there for ten years. And you cannot leave within that ten years. If you choose to leave within the ten years somebody else has to replace you so that you will not spoil our own business because some people are very rational they don't have emotional intelligence the next thing six months later i'm tired i'm out of this group i don't want to stay with anybody your money will remain there you, whether you associate with us your money must remain so we do the bylaws so i have templates of all the bylaws but i can't give it to you for free you pay for it so you have the bylaws that will guide you that will guide the group all the things then you can now decide which is optional to meet once a month if you are all in the same city you can meet once a month and do dinner once a month and that dinner can be rotated in each person's house so we can come to your house this month we come to another person's house this month so that we're also developing a relationship and then when we are meeting for that dinner we are eating and we are watching a financial movie or watching a financial documentary there are so many documentaries and movies on netflix on YouTube, and then we can also have book of the month. So you can have a book of the month on finances that we all read, and then you can also now have games like Monopoly and cash flow games, and then you play the game together. So by the time you are doing that, it means that you are saving money together, $10,000 per annum. You are meeting once a month or once every three months. And then what I will now do is to tell you what to do with the money. So I will now tell you how to do real estate, which is my major area. I will also go into franchising. There are franchises you can buy in America that are less than $10,000. There are franchises of $2,000. There are franchises of $50,000. So we can now say, okay, let's focus on real estate alone or real estate and franchising. So if we decide to focus on real estate and franchising, we now decide what kind of franchises if we decide to focus on real estate alone, we we'll now look at which real estate because in real estate we have land banking. You can buy land. We have buying dilapidated properties in auction or foreclosure or a property that have problem. Maybe the one that has been seized by FBI 
or seized by the government because they didn't pay taxes. All those properties, you buy it cheap, you do it up, you can now resell, which is flipping. Then you can decide that, okay, we want to keep the property as rental property. So we look at all the different options that we decide that in this our wealth question group, or this is what we want to do. And then we stay with it. So anybody that wants to leave, they will bring somebody else to replace them so that they will not destroy. So if you are doing 100,000 a year, that means in 10 years, you will have brought 1 million together into the system. But if you do 100,000 a year, for instance now, you can buy a house. We can say, okay, every year, if we gather the 100,000, we're buying two houses. So we can get two houses at 50,000. And there are houses of 30,000, 35, 40,000. We do the houses up and we rent it out. If we rent it out, so if in year one, we have two houses and we rent out and we're getting $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month from the two houses. In one year, we get 24,000. We'll do insurance, we'll pay our taxes, we'll pay agency fee. The net income that we get again, we put it again into another property and then we we'll move on like that. So we can now decide that we are going to be putting 10,000 each every year, but we are not going to take anything out or share any profit or anything until year three or until year five so that we can continue to reinvest the money. And before you know it, many of you already spent $10,000 every year going on holiday. All the holiday you have done for the past five to 10 years, what's the result in your life? So if you if you think that 10 years is too long for you to wait or five years is too long for you to wait, look back at the last five years of your life and ask yourself, what have I achieved in the last five years? It will help you to gain perspective that five years is not that long, 10 years is not that long. And when you do that, you'll be amazed that in 10 years, you are all talking millions. Wow. That's how much I can give you for free. So when you, you come on board, I will now charge you my own fee. So what I charge is minimum of $10,000 per annum. And then what I will do with that 10000 is to be your mentor. And then I will meet with all of you virtually three times a year online. We will do virtual meeting. I will coach you. You ask questions. I will tell you, do this one, do this one. I will guide you. And then um, we have a conference that I do, which I'm planning to now start in America and the UK. You all can now attend the conference once in a year, and then we'll meet physically, and we'll take you from there. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. That's a great one. <laughs> Very great. I don't know if our financial power has any question, but I think I have one more question here. Dr. Man uh, Dr. Emmanuel, can you please tell us about the different lands and how these opportunities you have for sale in Nigeria and in the US. So for those who want to buy, can you know reach out to you or reach out through us and we can get I didn't to the, get that get though. You look into he's, the he said, Can you tell us the different lands and houses opportunities okay. you have for us in Nigeria and in diaspora that people can confidently buy and know that they are safe? Okay, right now in Nigeria, you know, when I came to on tour. I actually have what I call the diaspora plots. So we have what we call the diaspora plots. It's $10,000 per plot. It is a product specifically for Nigerians in diaspora. Because most of the time, people buy land in Nigeria, but there's no security. So the diaspora plot is a plot of land in five different locations. And it comes with the fencing. We'll do the dwarf fence for you. And then it comes with all the documentation, and then it will be secured for you for two years. So once you buy the land at ten thousand dollars, you can go and rest for two years and gather money on what you want to build. And when you are now ready to build, we we'll also help you to supervise your building. If you start your building within the two years, we'll give you free architectural design and we'll supervise the building for you for free within those two years. But if you are building after two years, we will still give you free architectural design, but we'll charge you to help you to supervise your building. So that's Diaspora Plus. And it is available in Ikorodu, Ofada, Agbara, Uyo, and Abuja. Five locations. Ikorodu, Ofada, uh, Atonta, and then Uyo and Abuja. $10,000 per plot. And all the documents are intact, RFO, CFO, and right of occupancy. So... That's that of the land. On houses, we have three bedroom apartments in Arepo for sale at 32 million. We have two bedroom apartments in Idimu for sale at 29 million. If you are paying outrightly, if you are paying instrumentally, you can do six month payments. 
or you can do 12 month payment. So if you are doing six month payment, it will be 32 million. If you are doing 12 month payment, it will be 35 million. That is two bedroom. But the Arepo one is already built and it's once you pay 31, 32 million and you are done. Then we have one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom in the Korodu and in Agbara. So those ones, one bedroom is 8.5, two bedroom is 10.5, three bedroom is 15 million. So anyone you want, you come, investigate before you invest. Don't just listen to me because I'm talking on social media. Call your family member, call your lawyer, let them come to my office. We'll give them all the document, let them go and search it. Let them come and see the houses by themselves. So it's not things by moonlight. So you see the houses, you pay, you collect. The land that there, we'll give them the document, they go and search. So there is genuine investment. So all this one, eh, you don't know who to trust, you don't know who to trust. Trust is in front of you now. Is whether you are ready or not. So, thank you. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's a great session. I think Paul might want to stay one or two things. Let me give the floor for Paul. Yeah, Financial Paul, the, it's over. Yeah, I, I, I can't say any. Uh, I don't have much to say, but I just wanted to really appreciate Dr. Limide Imanre. We've been following Dr. Mm -hmm. Limide Imanre for a while now. And um, I know the place of mentorship, one-on-one -on -one mentorship in the journey of wealth creation. So many years ago, the Olumide Manuel was invited to a church I attend, Holy Ghost Church Center. And I could remember while he was explaining on financial freedom and journey to wealth creation. Funny enough, Dr. Olumide called me out and my other brothers, and he held us to explain um, vehicles to wealth creation. And when he held me, as I held him, I said, oh, God, I tap into this grace. <laughs> and this, this is like about seven or eight years ago. And it has been it has been a great one. Sir, if someone wants to get a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, because this is very key um, for maybe someone out there, um, can the person, what is, if the person wants to get a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, how can the person go about with this? If you have that oh. um, opportunity for people. Okay, number one, I'm a pastor, and the core of my life is impact. So because of that, I'm available to help anybody at any point in time. So I always tell people, if you are hungry enough, you will search out for the information. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. True. Follow me on all my social media platforms. Anybody that wants me to mentor them, this one I'm doing now is mentorship. I've done, I just finished Instagram live before I came on board. Almost every day, I'm invited all over the world. So on my Instagram page, on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook, information is loaded on a daily basis. So if you want me to mentor you, start with the social media, it's free. Follow me on Instagram at Olumi Dimano, Twitter, Olumi Dimano, Facebook, Olumi Dimano. So that when I'm doing Insta live, you'll be hearing free knowledge, free information. Go and download my TV station app. I have a TV okay. station. It's Common Sense TV. Go okay, to good. Google Play Store and App Store. Download the CSTV, Common Sense Television. Download it. There is 24-hour okay. content there. Go to our YouTube channel, Common Sense TV, CSTV, my CSTV Global. So go to CSTV. Go Google my name. Go to YouTube. Google Loop Day Banner. Google Common Sense TV. You see pro okay. all manner of information okay. free of charge. Wow. Then go to my website, www.olumidemane.org. All my books are there. Buy the book. That is mentorship. Listen mm. to it. Whenever you hear I'm coming somewhere, be there. That is the free one. And it's available for everybody. But if you now say, ah, I want one-on-one. -on -one. I want to be close. That one is not free. Oh. You will pay. Money. Because will pay counseling is free. But consultancy attracts a fee. Where there is a voice, there is an invoice. So, uh, I did not, I did not oh, speak wow. in tongues to go to Avant. I paid money. <laughs> so, uh, so what you need to do is, you can now go to my website, www.olumidemanner.org forward slash conclave. My mentorship platform is called the Billionaires Conclave. The Billionaires Conclave. So, when you join the Billionaires Conclave. You can now see the level. There is individual level for individuals. There is level for family, husband and wife. And there is level for corporate organization. And I mentor you around faith, family, and finance. 
and you can go there and see the fees download the brochure and if you can afford to do it pay for it and i'll see you in class uh, thank you so much sir for this opportunity thank you thank you so much this is awesome faith family and finance that's three f's so whatever yeah. you want to do just look at his website see which which of the areas you can fit in see what you can do and like he like, rightly said if you want free mentorship get his book follow him on all social media platforms so you can get some of this free mentorship before you decide to do one-on-one -on -one. perhaps maybe you're not getting enough from the social media, then you can talk to him. You can reach out to him. Should you have issues reaching out to him, you can reach out to me. To me, through him, I'm one of his rep in the United States too. Yes. And um, <laughs> so you might want to speak about your reps. What countries do you have them so that people, in case people do want to reach them, people in diaspora wants to reach out. Where do you have uh, representatives so they can reach out to them? Okay, we have offices on four or five continents. So um, in Africa, we have office in Lagos, Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria. And um, we have office in Accra, Ghana. We have office in Johannesburg, South Africa. We have office in London, England. We have office in Verona, Italy. We have office in Melbourne, Australia. We have office in New York. Atlanta and um, Houston. And then we have uh, representatives in Maryland. So uh, Sandra is our representative in Maryland. We have representative in Atlanta. BB is our representative in Atlanta. And then we have representative in Ohio. Oreso Two is our representative in Ohio. And we have representative in Dallas. So those are places where we have representatives. And um, Many people have been contacting us that they want to be our representative. We need to know you first. So when we know you, then we can now see whether we can you know, bring you on board as the representative. So all our reps are there. So you can contact Sandra. You want to buy the diaspora plot, contract, contact Sandra so that she will run you through the brochure. And then she can help you the application form, everything. You can contact her to get the diaspora plot or any of the houses. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I also want to thank our viewers. I want to thank you, everyone that joined. Sorry we had a delay before joining, but I want to thank you all the same who were able to connect. Thank you for joining. I also want to thank our guest, Dr. Lumide Imano. I know you have a busy schedule. <laughs> and be in between that, you have to take us on. But before we call it a day, I think someone just sent a message. Let me just reach out to everyone and make sure. Okay. Atlanta in house, okay? Yeah, okay. Some of the people are just, you know, affirming to what you're saying. Yes, they are representing in Atlanta. Evangelist Bibi is saying that she is representing Atlanta. So should you want to reach her, or should you want to reach any of these people in any of the states, you can reach out to me or reach out to either Evangelist Bibi. At least we have everyone. I have Tayo or Mose or Reset 2 in Ohio, and that for Dallas and the other um, states. I'll be able to share the information with you and there is a i think this the this version is recorded you can often go back to watch watch this show so i think uh to call it a day i want to say thank you sir for joining us financial for you have a word to say before we call it a day um just like uh dr Lumide Manuel said financial freedom financial information when you are informed you will not be deformed a lot of people are deformed financially in Nigeria, yeah. just simply because of lack of financial information. So we all have the information out there. Follow Dr. Lumide Emanuel on all platforms and you get massive financial information. That's what I have to say. Thank you so much, sir. Mm -hmm. And so for you to stay updated and not to leave updated, please seek for financial literacy. Get his book, read his book, get videos to watch. And like, like he rightly said, let's get into teams form well the uh, uh, world club come together and if you do need him to become a mentor there you can reach out to him too thank you so much and before we go let me just play this short video of our contact details so you can follow us all as well. so thank you and do have a blessed day bye everyone bye